Welcome to another edition of Anthony T's Horror and Wrestling Show. As this is a best of edition of the podcast, as yours truly is trying to cram as many 2022 films as I can before the end of the year. Now, this year was a very good year for horror films. But one horror film that took up most of the time on the podcast this year was Halloween Ends. Unfortunately, that turned out to be one of the worst films I've seen this year. Literally. And I spent a lot of time on the podcast talking about this film. A lot. Because Jason Blum takes over the podcast. But this film, in particular, took over. And from the minute David Gordon Green, Blumhouse, announced that there would be a four-year time jump between kills and ends, I knew it was a bad idea. I didn't think it would be this bad of an idea, as this was completely awful. As it literally threw away whatever happened in the first two films that set up the big final act in David Gordon Green's Halloween trilogy, only to just go in a 180 direction and just ignore the first two films and do a completely different film that made no sense with the first two films of that trilogy. Because if you're going to go down this road, you have to stay down this road for the final act of a trilogy. Not change it up and just have a new story in your final act like this film did. And it really ruined... Halloween ends for me. And I've seen this film twice. And it doesn't even work. If you take out the title Halloween ends. It just doesn't. But I digress. This is the best of rants. On Halloween ends. Leading up. To my scathing review. Of the film. It was so bad. That I dropped an F bomb. In my review. Of this film. And I did not think I'd see a movie worse than Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Morbius this year. But Halloween Ends is definitely the worst film of the year. And I've got a lot of material on this film in this edition of the Best of Anthony T's Horror and Wrestling Show. As I will cover stuff like an unaired rant that I recorded for a September episode, but didn't air because, well, we had no September episodes due to restructuring of the podcast. But I did record a Halloween Ends rant about David Gordon Green couldn't make up his mind about the ending of the film. Well, it showed in the ending of Halloween Ends because literally that third act was abysmal. Literally. Literally. Abysmal. I will have that on this episode. I will also have the infamous Cunningham trailer that I cut. The episode after my infamous Halloween Ends review. I will have that on this best of episode. But first, I'm going to have not one but two segments to start off. On Halloween Ends. Episode 68 was pretty much a show where Halloween Ends just completely hijacked my podcast. Literally. As almost every segment had something to do with Halloween Kills or Halloween Ends. Because it was, I believe, the Rhode Island Comic Con preview show. And James Jude Courtney, back in 2021, came to Rhode Island Comic Con. All this happened on this same episode. The Rhode Island Comic Con preview with James Jude Courtney. And not one rant on Halloween Ends, but two rants on Halloween Ends. Retaining to a time jump of four years. Now, this was a bad idea. I knew it from the beginning. This was going to be a bad idea. And it was. 
And as you'll now see in these two segments from episode 68. Expect the news to be completely dominated by Halloween ends, Halloween kills, and anything Halloween related. Because, let's just face it, this show is taken over by Halloween kills. It's like the whole David Gordon Green Halloween trilogy has completely hijacked this podcast. Because every segment, including the Rhode Island Comic Con preview, has... Something to do with David Gordon Green's Halloween films. Seriously, I've never seen a film take up a whole podcast. Or a series of films, for that matter. Take up a whole podcast episode of Anthony T's Horror and Wrestling Show. But that is just what happens here on this episode. Case in point. David Gordon Green recently did an interview... With Collider.com, talking about Halloween kills and Halloween ends. In that interview, he talks about the time jump from Halloween kills to Halloween ends. And it's a pretty long time jump. When I was thinking of a time jump, I think maybe a year or maybe, I don't know, a couple hours. But not four years. That's right. The next Halloween film and final film in David Gordon Green's Halloween trilogy is taking place four years after the original film. Are you kidding me? Seriously? We're going to have a long four-year time jump. Now, this is the one thing now I want to know in this time jump. What's Michael been up to for four years? Seriously? Because, quite frankly, you get to find out what going on in Haddonsfield with the survivors of Halloween kills four years after that film. But now I really want to know what's going to happen to Michael Myers for four years. What's Michael been up to for four years? Seriously. Because I think this is kind of ridiculous that Halloween ends is taking a four year time jump from the end of Halloween kills. And you can see next segment I will go into even more uh, absurd time jump theories. Because, quite frankly, this is absurd. A four-year time jump between Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends is just ridiculous. Seriously. Because we all know what happened to the survivors of Halloween Kills in this film. But basically, I want to know what happened to Michael Myers in between those four years. Because, literally, I just don't get why they, uh... Decided to do a four-year time jump. Come on, David Gordon Green. Seriously. And in another interview talking about Halloween ends, David Gordon Green also talks about how the COVID-19 pandemic will play a role in the film. Huh? Seriously? This is getting way off topic from the first film. As you'll see in my review later at the end of this podcast, this is getting way off from the original Halloween films. Seriously. It's like right now adding everything that's happening in the news into these Halloween films. It's like what happened to horror films being just fun to watch? Seriously. It's like everybody's going to add something from the news now. It's like every other horror film nowadays skim to the point where, oh, we have to talk about this topic that happened in the news and that topic. What happened to horror films just being a fun time where you just, it's escapism. It's like, it's getting ridiculous here. Seriously. I will talk about it in my Halloween Kills review as it does have some elements of things going on currently in the world today. But this is ridiculous. Seriously. I am getting sick and tired of these news events bleeding into my horror films. I know artists have a voice. But sometimes when you're dealing with franchises such as Halloween, you're just there to see a film. And I just don't get why David Gordon Green has to bring in all these elements from the news into his Halloween films. Seriously. It just loses the fun aspect of what the franchise used to be. And it feels like it's getting to the point now where 
it just feels out of place for a Halloween film where you're bringing in elements of real life current events into the franchise. It just feels so out of place and it's not the Halloween films I used to watch. Seriously. I think it's getting way over the top here. They did this at Halloween Kills and David Gordon Green and the Rice are going to do this again with Halloween Ends. Bringing in real life news into the film. I just don't get it. Seriously. Maybe it works out. Maybe it doesn't. But I got a really bad feeling about Halloween Ends. Given the fact that it's going to have a four year time jump. And the COVID-19 pandemic being part of the story in one form or another. Welcome back. Recently on the Real Glenn podcast, David Gordon Green gave an interview talking about Halloween Kills. And in the interview, he talks about plans for Halloween Ends. He says that the film is going to involve a bit of a time jump. That's right. We're going to have a time jump after Halloween Kills. This is my first thoughts to this. WTF. Seriously? I don't know why you would do this, David Gordon Green. Seriously. Do a time jump. Why not? What's it going to be? A couple hours? A couple of weeks? A couple of months? Hell, could be a couple of years. It's neither because at the beginning of the show, I told you that the next film, Halloween Ends, takes place four years after the first two films. So it's definitely not a couple of years. This is such a very dumb idea. And it's a very risky one, quite frankly, because all the momentum you build in Halloween Kills is going to get squashed with this time jump. Because when you do a time jump in a film or a TV series, everything gets slowed down. Now, I have not seen Halloween Kills at the time I'm recording this segment, so I am not giving away any spoilers for Halloween Kills in these scenarios, or I like to call absurd time jumps for Halloween ends. That's right. My fake production company, Dumb House Productions, and I have come up with some absurd time jumps For the upcoming Halloween Ends film. Now before I go into these absurd time jumps. There's no spoilers for Halloween Kills in it. Because I run through a couple of scenarios with characters not involved in Halloween Ends. Case in point. I may have a scenario where I have Jamie Lee Curtis's character in my plans. But the other two family members of the Strode family are dead. Or maybe the daughter and granddaughter. Or maybe none of the Strodes make it to Halloween ends in this absurd time jump plans. Courtesy of, you guessed it, my production company, Dumb House Productions. They've sent me some time jumps and I have to read them. That's right, I still have my... Motion picture company that doesn't film a thing. It's just audio only. But they sent me some nice, absurd pitches, including one of my own for Halloween Ends. First bad pitch for the time jump for Halloween Ends. Halloween Ends takes place on Christmas Eve. The Strokes are celebrating Christmas Eve when Michael Myers decides to go on a killing spree Wearing a Christmas hat. And it's up to Laurie Strode to end Michael's reign of terror before he kills Santa Claus. That's right. Santa Claus is in this first pitch, everyone. The film features cameos from Peter Billingsley, who everyone knows played Ralphie in A Christmas Story. And former WWE champion Bill Goldberg from Santa Slay. And as a bonus, stay tuned after the credits as Bill Goldberg fights James Jude Courtney in a steel cage. Okay? That's the first absurd 
in bad pit for Halloween ends. Okay, let's go to another one. Halloween ends takes place on some random day where CTU agent John Bauer is dispatched to Haddonfield to hunt Michael Myers, who kills half of the town in Halloween Kills. He is aided by Laurie Strode to help find and kill Michael once and for all. The only problem is that he has 24 hours to do it. In the longest film in cinematic history, as this film takes place in a 24-hour span with many twists, turns, and betrayals. It's 24 meets Friday the 13th as the clock ticks. The film stars Kiefer Sullen and Jamie Lee Curtis. Sorry there, I had to get a 24 reference there. It's literally the second greatest TV show of all time, right behind Twin Peaks, of course. That is just the best. David Lynch rules. Okay, let's move to the third pitch. Halloween Ends takes place on the night of the prom, when Allison is getting ready for the biggest night of her life as its senior prom in Haddonfield High School. She's still reeling from the deaths of her mother and grandmother, but she's ex excited for a special night. But Michael Myers has resurfaced in Haddonsfield, and this time he's out there to kill the remaining member of the Strode family. And anyone who stands in his way, well, you know what happens. As Michael is looking to kill off the Strode bloodline for good. Alright, that's another really absurd pitch. But this is what happens when you want to take a movie and do a time jump. You're going to get absurd pitches and something absurd might happen. And finally, this is probably the most absurd one of them all. Halloween Ends takes place in Haddonfield, post-Halloween Kills, where Michael takes out most of the town, including the Strode family. One year later, a group of film students travel to Haddonfield to document the remains of the town and interview the remaining survivors of Michael's rampage. When the filmmakers arrive at the Myers house with film cameras in hand. But it soon attracts Michael. As the film crew leaves the house, they realize the car tires are slashed and one of the filmmakers is missing. Now stuck in Haddonfield, they are forced up against this unspeakable evil as they try to stop him or die filming. This film also co-stars horror legend Robert England. Okay, this is very absurd. I know. But there's a point to what this is. I am not happy that Halloween Ends is going to be basically a time jump. And from the looks of it, this film can take place the day after Halloween. Literally. It could take place a week after Halloween. It could take place months after Halloween Kills. But David Gordon Green did the most absurd thing of them all by having a four-year time jump. What I'm saying here is I don't think it's a good idea, a time jump for this series. I'm sorry. I don't believe that they should be doing a time jump. It should be one continuous story, and that's it. Sadly, we're getting a four-year time jump. And I really don't think any good's going to come out of this four-year time jump, quite frankly. But I could be wrong. It could be great. It's just a bad feeling that I have that they are doing a time jump after Halloween Kills. It should be the night he came home, not the night's. He came home. Welcome to Dark Discussions, your place for the discussion of horror film, fiction, and all that's fantastic. 
a weekly podcast where the discussion is about the most recent horror and genre films. Intelligent talk on a genre that deserves intelligence. A conversation between co-hosts discussing not only the films, but also the connotation that the directors and screenwriters are trying to articulate. If you want more than a review, listen to Dark Discussions. And speaking of perception, there's just one more scene I want to talk about, which is after Caleb discovers that Kyoto's a robot, Kyoto kind of peels off her skin, showing him what's underneath. Now, wait a minute. I know where you're going with this, but tell me you weren't already thinking this 15 minutes earlier in the film. Exactly what he's thinking at that moment. Which is he's a robot, too. Oh, I considered the possibility. Right, and that's what I like, is the fact that the writers were smart enough to know that this is what the audience would be thinking. We've all seen Blade Runner. <laughs> right, <laughs> Exactly. www.darkdiscussions.com, wherever podcasts are found. Welcome back. Now, this unaired rant is about David Gordon Green having trouble finding his ending to Halloween Ends. Now, this took place like around late August, early September, there was a new story that David Gordon Green was still trying to finish out how he was going to end Halloween Ends. Certainly, your release date's in October. Late August, early September, that film should be locked. Not still editing, not still trying to figure out how you're ending your film. As you can see by the end product, it was rushed. That whole third act was rushed. Like, you wouldn't believe. And it really showed that David Gordon Green had no idea what he wanted to do with that third act at all. Because that's how films fail. When you're rushing things in the third act. That third act will either make or break your film. This really broke the film. The film to this point wasn't good as is, but that third act was just horrendous. And it's probably the worst third act I've seen since The Predator. And it really shows how David Gordon Green couldn't find his ending. And how he was like in late August, early September, still trying to edit. Can't figure out how he's going to end his film. You can't do that. For a film that needs to be released in October. If this was a normal film, sure, you have more time to flesh out. But he didn't. And this is what happened. That's the ending we got. You'll hear my thoughts on that. But first, back in episode 82, there was an announcement that Universal was putting Halloween Ends on Peacock the same day it hit theaters. Now, back then, I didn't know what to think. I thought it was, for me, I didn't have to go to the theater. Because they didn't want me to go to the theater. Now I know why they didn't want me to go to the theater. Because the film sucked really bad. And if I paid $10, $11, I would have been pissed off even more. If these films go to streaming day of theater, it's usually a telling sign with some of these universal films as... Quite frankly, you had the same thing with Firestarter, and that film sucked too. So, anytime Universal does a day of streaming, day of theatrical release, signs are the film is probably going to be bad. I should have known this going in, but I was too blind to see it. Moving on, we got some Halloween Ends news. And I have to say, there's a big thank you to, wait for it, wait for it, Jason Blum and Blumhouse Productions for making Halloween Ends free. That's right, like the last Halloween film, Halloween Ends will end up on Peacock. Day of theatrical release. Recently, Universal and Blumhouse Productions released a video with Jamie Lee Curtis 
making the announcement that Halloween Ends will end up on both Peacock and theaters the same day. In which Halloween Ends is due to come out on October 14th. Which is really one of my most anticipated films of the year. And I am so shocked about this news. Seriously. This is shocking news, everyone. I did not expect this to happen, quite frankly. I was literally prepared to go to the theater and see this film. You know, the traditional way. But... I keep trying to tell you people, do not throw your films on streaming that quickly. Because if you do, I will not go to the movie theater and see it. I will sit home and watch it in the comfort of my own home. Because, well, you're giving it to me for basically free. And this is the problem here. Halloween Ends is a film that should have been exclusive to theaters. They made the black phone exclusive to theaters. If anything, the black phone should have been the one that had the peacock in in theaters day of. Not Halloween Ends. I don't know what's going on with Universal and with... Blumhouse Productions. Is NBC desperate trying to get Peacock subscribers? Because seriously, this is probably a play you don't make if you're having a good streaming service like, say, Paramount Plus. Because you haven't seen Paramount Plus rush Top Gun Maverick to its streaming service. You haven't noticed that yet. They have every other film... That's hit theaters this year on this streaming service. Except Top Gun Maverick. And they're not in any hurry to put Top Gun Maverick on their streaming service. Which tells me that this streaming service is doing good. Peacock on the other hand, I don't get. Seriously. Is this a ploy to get subscribers to Peacock? Because as a subscriber to Peacock... I don't have any interest to see the movie now in theaters. Because I can see this film in the comfort of my own home. Quite frankly, movies are supposed to be seen in theaters. But I don't get what's going on with NBC Universal here. I get the way they're structuring their films by waiting until they hit Blu-ray to put it on Peacock. Which is Fine, but to throw a marquee title like Halloween Ends on Peacock and in theaters on the same day is a little worrisome here to me. Because this tells me this might not be as good as we think this film is going to be. It's just that, literally. You, you don't dump a marquee film like this on Peacock. You don't. I just don't get NBC Universal's decision here. I was prepared to go and see this film in the movie theaters like a normal person. As yes, I'm going to start to go see more movies in the theaters. I'm going to see Pearl when it comes out in the theaters. Provided it plays in my area, of course. You always have to put that with A24 because they tend to have limited releases on most of their films. So sometimes films will not play in my area. But to have a marquee title like Halloween Ends be on Peacock and in theaters, I just don't get seriously. At least Screenbox is putting Terrifier 2 in theaters first. Before throwing it onto their streaming service. And I may go see it if it's playing in my area. But then again, knowing my area, it probably won't play in my area. So I'll probably be be waiting for it to hit Screenbox in November. But still, if Terrify 2 played at my theater, I'd go and rush and see it. If it played like in a weekly engagement, I find the time to see the film. If I can. 
But I just don't get what Universal and Blumhouse Productions is doing here by throwing Halloween Ends for free, basically. When you throw something on a streaming service that you pay for, it's basically free to you. And I know you need to have the Peacock Premium tier, which I do have. But still, this is not a good idea. This film should be just exclusive to theaters only. Look at Warner Brothers. All of a sudden, they just pulled Evil Dead Rise off of HBO Max. And now they're going to put that film in theaters next year. Which is pretty much destroying HBO Max. But at least Warner Brothers is recommitting to theaters again. After the original plan to throw everything onto HBO Max. But still, you can't throw marquee films onto streaming services. Unless you're Netflix, of course. Netflix does whatever they want. But... Here's the thing. I was prepared to see Halloween ends in theaters. And now, thank you, Jason Blum. Thank you, Universal Pictures. I will be seeing Halloween ends for free on Peacock. Why did you guys have to do it? Because you're not making money that way. You're just trying to get people to subscribe to a streaming service, pay the $10, then cancel next month. That's all that's happening here. They'll subscribe, see the film, cancel. And that's not good. Seriously. If you're Universal Pictures. Because I was prepared to see this one in theaters. And now you just made my decision a whole lot easier. As I will be watching this film for free on Peacock. Thank you, Jason Blum. Thank you, Universal Pictures. Why don't we start off with the news with the most talked about topic on the podcast. Yes, Jason Blum in Blumhouse Productions. As we're getting very close to Halloween ends... And there was a story that came out September 1st that David Gordon Green is still fooling around with the ending of this film. Are you effing kidding me? Seriously. Usually six weeks before a film is released, you should at least have it locked down. Because this film is coming out October 14th in theaters and on Peacock. Where I can see it in the comfort of my own home. Because since Universal Pictures likes to throw away money and throw this film on Peacock. First of all, this film should not be on Peacock at all. I don't get why this film is on Peacock. But, let's get back to the topic at hand. If you're six weeks before a release date and you're still fooling around with your film it's not a good sign and very worrisome and now we're like under a month before halloween ends comes out is this film done finally i like to know that quite frankly seriously or is david garden green still fooling around with this film it's like fangaria had an interesting take on this on the official facebook page they said it's almost pencils down time why are we even at this point? Maybe the pencils are down right now. But still, why did we get to this point? Seriously, six weeks before a movie is supposed to be released and the film's director has no idea of how to end his film. This presents a very troubling sign for Halloween Ends, quite frankly. Seriously. Because... Going into a film and knowing that this film is supposed to be released six weeks from now. Because I found about this around September 1st. is totally stupid. This should be done by now, quite frankly. It's like, how many endings does this film, does this film have, quite frankly? Do we have three, four, five 
endings of Halloween ends? Because I don't know what David Gordon Green is thinking with how he's going to end this film. Because having trouble trying to figure out how you're going to end your film six weeks before your release date. Because I found this news story around September 1st. It's very troublesome for the film. And I don't get why David Gordon Green is waiting to the last minute here. David Gordon Green needs to get this film done. I hope it's done now. Seriously. I hope he's done with this film. Because I really do not want a situation where we end up having two weeks to go and this film isn't done. I don't get what David Gordon Green is doing here. Seriously, he's ruining this film. Can't figuring out how to end your movie. You co-wrote the screenplay for this film. This should have been done months ago. This should have been done a month ago. But when we're in that six week period before release date, it's very troublesome that you don't have an ending to your film. That presents major warning signs that this may turn out to be bad. And if this film turns out to be bad and people start bitching and complaining about the ending, we all know of one person to blame for it. It's David Gordon Green because the guy cannot figure out how to end his film. It's very important to have a very good ending, but it's also very important to have this film locked. And finding out that a film six weeks before its release date isn't locked in is a very troublesome sign. This film has to come out on October 14th. If this was any other film, you would probably get a release date change. But you have to have this film released around Halloween for a maximum profit. And if David Gordon Green can't figure out what the hell he's doing, then I don't know what the end result for this film is going to be. Seriously. Because I got a really bad feeling that about this. Look at Scream 6. They're, they're done filming. They're going to probably have their film locked in a couple of months before its release date. But for Halloween Kills, we're waiting to the final minutes to lock in this film. And that's never a good sign for a film. Just remember, if you don't like the ending to Halloween Ends, just blame David Gordon Green because David Gordon Green is so indecisive. Because that's what you take away from the ending of the film now. If you're not going to like the ending, there's only one person to blame. You can't blame the screenwriters. You can't blame the producers. You can't blame Jason Blum. You only blame the director who couldn't figure out how to end his film. Enough with this rant. Seriously. I could go on all day. But this is just movie making 101. You cannot wait to the last minute and make 10 million changes to your film. It just doesn't work for the best. I got a really bad feeling about Halloween ends. I am hope I'm wrong and everything is peachy. Hey guys, this is Steven Christina. I'm the founder, owner, creator, and host of Super Retro Throwback Reviews. Are you looking for the best movie reviews, music reviews, video game reviews, and Comic-Con coverage all around? Well then look no further. Definitely check out Super Retro Throwback Reviews on YouTube and our new audio podcast, the new and improved Super Retro Throwback Reviews Audio Files version 2.0 on the following media distributors. Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Spotify. Class is over, John. Time for something new and improved. Every day there's a family struggling with hospital bills to care for their sick child who is fighting an illness. There's a woman who is fighting breast cancer and is having trouble making ends meet while paying for their treatment. And there are burn victims that are going through treatments to heal their deep wounds. 
There is a charity in the horror community that helps these people. Scares That Care is an organization that helps families deal with the bills for their child. They help women get the treatment they need to fight breast cancer. And they help people who are dealing with severe burns get the help they need to heal. Scares That Care is a 100% volunteer organization and 501c3 nonprofit charity that is dedicated to helping these people in fighting real monsters. To find out more information or to donate to Scares That Care, you can go to www.scaresthatcare.org. Every donation helps Scares That Care fight real monsters. While next segment will need no introduction because it's my review of Halloween ends, which is worth a good listen. The episode after my review of Halloween ends, I decided I wanted to create a fake trailer for what I thought Halloween ends was. It was a nice award-winning film from my production company, Dumb House Productions, called Cunningham. Well, that's what happens when you do a really Bad movie that irritates me. You give me ideas to spoof it. And guess what? I did it. Because there were a lot of memes going around about Corey Cunningham. And I had to join in the Corey Cunningham meme train. So that's what led to me doing Cunningham on the podcast. As there were a lot of really good Corey Cunningham memes going around after Halloween Ends was released this year. In fact, they were much better than the movie I saw, for sure, as it provided the exact description of Halloween Ends. But I'll let you listen to my take on the Corey Cunningham meme train with Cunningham. Welcome back. Now, yours truly, last episode, kindly ripped Halloween Ends to shreds. So, why are we still talking about this on this podcast? Well, first of all, I just wanted to get off more things off my chest on this film because, well, A, this was quickly done. This episode, last episode, was quickly done to the point that there was like maybe like five days turnover from start with Halloween Ends review to finishing up production on the Tuesday of that week, then out Wednesday. And I, I kind of had more of a rushed reaction of this film because I want to kind of break this down more because quite frankly, this was a really bad film from start to finish. Now, first of all, Halloween Ends is supposed to be the end of a trilogy. Meaning, all bets are off. I never got that sense in Halloween Ends, quite frankly. Instead, this film really felt like a completely different film. It felt like a different film. It didn't feel like a Halloween film. It didn't feel like a Halloween film in this timeline. Instead, we get a separate film which could have easily been its own film, the Corey Cunningham story. That whole thing about introducing a new character, which you should never do in an end of a trilogy, is introduce that new character and make him be the focal point of this film. That's what is one of the main problems with this film. The fact that Corey Cunningham was the main character, pretty much. Never did I ever get the sense that Michael Myers was the main character. Never did I get a sense that Laurie Strode was the main character. It was Corey Cunningham. He was, like, probably in this film the most in this film, besides Laurie Strode, if not even more than Laurie Strode. Because I got that feeling. It felt like that. And you cannot have that in a third pot. Second... You are advertising this film as the big showdown between Laurie Strode and Michael Myers. Well, 
This film did not feel like that. This film felt like the Corey Cunningham show for about a good hour, hour and a half. Halloween Ends is basically a 30-minute movie, if best. Maybe 20 minutes. Because this literally felt like lazy writing. It's like David Gordon Green, Danny McBride, and everybody else didn't know what to do with the third film. There's a simple reason. Let Michael Myers go off on the town. How hard is that? And I knew this four-year time jump, which I talked about on this podcast, was a dumb idea. So much so that last year at the Horror Whammies, I thought that was the worst idea of 2021. Well, I was proven right. Because that four-year time jump allowed for a lot of lazy writing. They should have started this film at the end of Kills. I saw the extended cut, saw the ending where Lori goes out of that hospital with a knife. That's what... Ends should have started off with. Not four years later or a year later where we get Corey Cunningham babysitting somebody then accidentally killing somebody. I don't get it. It's just lazy writing. Then David Gordon Green decides, you know what? Maybe I should start trying ideas for The Exorcist reboot, which is slated to come out next year. Maybe I'll have Corey Cunningham go down the sewer. Spoiler alert. Now we're going to talk spoilers from here on in. Corey Cunningham goes down the sewer. He finds Michael Myers. Michael grabs him. You expect Michael Myers to kill him. Instead, he just stares at him, looks at him at the eye, and he kind of like possesses him. And it's like, you know what? You're my kind of friend, quite frankly. What? That's not the Michael Myers I know. The Michael Myers I know would get rid of Corey Cunningham right then and there. I don't get David Gordon Green. I think he was trying out ideas for the Exorcist reboot with that film. Seriously. That's only the reason why Halloween Ends exists. And it's sad. It's probably going to end up in my library because, well, I, you always want to keep the whole t- trilogy... I'm one of those people that has the whole trilogy to everything, even though it films suck. I have every Hellraiser film. I have every Halloween film from the original series. But it just really... That might have been the worst film I've seen all year. Quite frankly, seriously. But then again, to make matters worse, my production company, Dumb House Productions, already has a film done. Literally. Done. They sent to me the trailer too. It was like they shot this film in 48 hours. You know these 48 hour film festivals? That's what I guess happened. Then they sent out screeners. And they also got a couple of reviews of this film too. Which is amazing. All this probably between episodes. It's amazing. I don't know how they do it. I'm surprised. It's like I go away on vacation. Then I get a trailer from my production company, Dumb House Productions. If you don't know what Dumb House Productions is, it is the only motion picture company that releases films without using a camera. They sent this trailer for a film called Cunningham. Dumb House Productions presents the most anticipated horror film of 2022, Cunningham. Time to go to bed. Something bad might happen to you if you don't go to bed. Cunningham, an absolute masterpiece. The New York Daily Gazette. I don't know any of it, buddy. Sure. I love you, Corey. Cunningham, a love story. You're the greatest thing that happened to me in my life. Ow, ow. Yeah, murderer. But uh, no, do not throw me down there. No, don't throw me down. No. Bye bye. <laughs> Cunningham, a story about friendship. Oh, this 
dark cave. We're going to be best friends and killing buddies. Cutting him. I don't want to see you with my daughter ever again. Because I've seen evil and you're evil. Cunning him. No, no, we're sorry. We're sorry, Cory. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Stephen Carpenter has seen the next big horror icon and his name is Cunningham. Ha! If I can't be with your daughter, I'll make sure you're not. Cunningham, coming soon to theaters and Dumb House Plus. Ha ha! I got your mask! Ha ha! I got your mask! Cunningham, coming soon to theaters into streaming on Dumb House Plus. Hi, I'm Anthony T. And I'm director Andrew Duran. And we are the Two from Hell. Hell. And we're putting Rated R back into podcasting. Every month we will be dropping an episode on the Doc Discussions Network. We'll be chatting about some of our favorite films, news, reviews, and maybe interviews. You can find Two From Hell on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcast providers. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram at Two From Hell Podcast. Trust me, you're seriously not going to want to miss the show. You'll find Anthony T's horror and wrestling show on these social media platforms. On Facebook, Instagram, and the Slasher app at Anthony T's Power and Wrestling. And on Twitter at Anthony T's Power. You'll find new episodes on DocDiscussions.com, major podcast providers, and YouTube. The following review contains spoilers and language that may not be suitable for young listeners. Listener discretion advised. What's Anthony T. watching this episode? One of the most divisive horror films of the year, Halloween Ends. Going into this film, I was so excited. Seriously. Hoping that this would bring a better story, a better energy to everything. But from the beginning of this film, this was a train wreck from start to finish. It was so shocking that this film was a train wreck. I don't get it. Seriously. I get... David Gordon Green tried to do something different. I'll give him that. It could have been well executed better. Seriously. It could have. I like original content. And I would have probably been down with his idea. But it was like blunder after blunder after blunder. First off, minor spoilers... Your title credits are in blue. It's Halloween. It's supposed to be orange, not blue. What am I watching here? A Marvel movie? Because seriously, blue. Why did they use blue in this film for the title credits? Seriously, who came up with that acidine idea to use blue in the title credits for a horror film that takes place on Halloween and we associate Halloween with pumpkins and they are orange. I didn't get that. That was the first thing that really pissed me off about this film. The next thing this 
film pissed me off was the fact that this film had some really bad dialogue. Now, if he had really good dialogue in this film, I'd probably buy some of this stuff. Seriously. Because I love original content, quite frankly. It's written so haphazardly that it's lazy. Danny McBride, David Gordon Green are better than that, quite frankly. And it was just bad dialogue. It's like, what the hell was I watching here? It's like, why am I watching this film? Seriously. Second, you start this film four days before Halloween. It's like, you know we're going to have problems because, well, this film to slow down at a good pace because you have to start telling a story four days out. Okay. Another thing that I don't like about this screenplay was the new character in this film, Corey. I don't know why we needed to add a new character in this film. Seriously. It really took away from other characters from, from the previous two films. You had Will Patton relegated to pretty much cameo. He literally did nothing in this film after doing something in the last two films. I don't get that. First of all. Second, we spent way too much time on the Corey Allison relationship because that really dragged this film. Film down. I know you're trying to tell a story, David, but I don't want to see a relationship this late in the stage of a trilogy. And don't get me started about Michael Myers here. Because literally, I'm going to stop talking spoilers now. Because I did not like the fact that we had Michael Myers and fake Michael Myers. That, it's just so stupid, quite frankly. It got to the point where the last third of the film where it dragged with pretty much a montage of death scenes. You had like six, seven death scenes in like 10, 15 minutes. There's no scares in those scenes. It's like a procession of scenes. It's like you do a collection of death scenes. It is not scary. It's just boring. I don't get it. Quite frankly... Who thought this would be a great idea to have Corey go on a killing spree in a 15 minute time frame? Literally. It's like, why do we even bother introducing this new character? This new character flat out sucked. And the fact that David Gordon Green, Danny McBride, and his team of writers failed miserably. Jamie Lee Curtis, I don't know what she was thinking doing this film. It's like they were trying to make a serious drama. I'm all for doing something different with the Halloween franchise. Don't get me wrong. But when you have constant scenes of Jamie Lee Curtis writing her memoirs, Corey dating Allison, Jamie Lee Curtis talking to Corey, it's like, I don't know why. Corey was the big problem with this film. Why did we need to have him in this film or even in this franchise, quite frankly? Because seriously, this was just horrible. All the horrible mess in this film centered almost around Corey. And I'm going to give you another spoiler. Michael Myers in this film is only... In this film for like 10 minutes or so. Seriously. He was not in this film for long. And when I watch a Halloween film. I want to see the shape. I don't want to see fake Michael Myers. I want to see real Michael Myers. Instead. Most of the time we saw fake Michael Myers in this film. And it's like it's ridiculous. Seriously guys. I don't want to see fake Michael Myers. There's a reason why people love the shape. And it's because of what the character has done. But David Gordon Green and Danny McBride got a jump start on The Exorcist by having this so-called relationship between Michael and Corey where he just 
basically stares at the guy, kind of like possessing him in some way. It's This is not the exorcist here, people. This is supposed to be Halloween Ends, not some possession movie where someone goes, grabs a couple people so the killer can kill. I don't get it. They made the shape look so weak in this film. I just don't get that idea. It really was mind-boggling that the shape, who's been this strong character for the first two Halloween films, was pretty much A, a minor character in this film, and B, very weak. This, I don't associate Michael Myers as a weak character or a weak villain. And in this film, he came off as a weak villain. Having to have someone else do your bidding for you. I don't get it. Seriously, David. I don't get it, Danny. I don't get it, Jason Blum. How can you story do this? Seriously. No wonder why this film ended up on Peacock. Because they figured this film will suck. After word of mouth. And it's just awful. Seriously. This was just an awful film. I don't get why they even tried it. Seriously. The idea was good. I'll give them that. The execution was just flat out horrible. If we had more of the shape in this film, this would have been a really good film. But instead, we had to make Corey the main character of this film. Because that's what this film felt like. It felt like Laurie Strode, Allison, and Corey were the main characters of this film. And that's not what a Halloween film should be, quite frankly. The shape shouldn't be reduced to someone who's just weak and having to possess somebody in order to, with the exception of the last 15 minutes of this film, he felt like he was just there for this entire film. I just don't get it, seriously. How could Jason Blum greenlight a script like that that was going to piss off a ton of Halloween fans? I just don't get it, Jason Blum. What is with you? Seriously. You think you know what we want. We don't want Michael Myers in a film for 10 minutes. I'm sorry. And it's not even that. The deaths, there's no tension to any of the death scenes in this film. Even when fake Michael Myers kills people in this film. There's no tension. This was just flat out. A train wreck from start to finish. Easily one of the worst films of this year. It's up there with Halloween 5 and the theatrical version of Halloween 6 as the worst ones in this franchise. This was just flat out awful. I'm glad I did not see this in theaters. Really, this joins the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And the Jason Blum produced Firestarter reboot as some of the worst horror films of the year. As David Gordon Green, Danny McBride, and Jason Blum really ruined this franchise for now. Because quite frankly, this was fucking awful. I apologize for my language, but that's what this film was. As it was atrocious. And that four year time jump proved out to be a big bust. It amazes me. This year has provided... Two horror icons in one star movies. I don't get it. If you're looking for something that's original horror and it's done effectively, watch Terrifier 2 whenever it hits Screenbox. That's great horror. Or watch the reimagining of Hellraiser in which Pinhead was great. But you have Leatherface and Michael Myers... In that club of worst films of 2022. I never thought I would say that in a sentence. But it is true. Unbelievable. Unbleeping believable. Halloween ends turned out to be a train wreck. And we can all thank the middle of Halloween Kills. For turning this trilogy into a failure. After one of the greatest reboots of all time. Great job, David Gordon Green. Great job, Danny McBride. You ruined Halloween. You've done it. You ruined what you could have had a great trilogy and just 
ruined it. And shame on Jason Blum for allowing this script and the way David Gordon Green played with the ending of this film. Because literally, this film is just the last 10 minutes of this film. That's it. As everything else sucked. Well, that was another edition of the Best of Anthony T's Horror and Wrestling Show. I want to thank everyone for listening to this podcast this year. As it's fun making these podcasts. Even though this year we were low on guests, I had a lot of things to talk about. Wrestling-wise and horror movie-wise. And it's been fun. I had a really good time. I'm happy you people listen to this podcast I'm happy you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and other major podcast providers. I want to also thank Philip Perrone from Doc Discussions Network for providing an audio home for this podcast. Without him, this podcast would not be possible, as he does a great job with Doc Discussions Network. Don't forget, you can... Find Anthony T's Horror and Wrestling Show on social media at Anthony T's Horror and Wrestling on Facebook, Instagram, and the Slasher app. I hope everyone has a safe and happy holidays and a happy new year. Can't wait to be back in the new year with the 5th Annual Horror Show Awards and Horror Whammies. As I might have said 4th Annual last episode, but actually it's the 5th Annual Horror Show Awards and Horror Show Whammies. As this podcast next year is turning five years old. This will be the fifth year I will be doing this podcast. And it's been a fun time so far. With that, I want to thank you for listening this year. Have a good day. And don't forget to support indie wrestling and support indie horror. This has been a Film Arcade Media production.